Sheikh Al-Azhar said, I went to Egypt and I found Islam, but I did not find Muslims. Europe. So I went to Europe, sorry. I went to Europe and I found Islam, but I did not find Muslims. And I've come back to Egypt where I find Muslims, but I do not find Islam. Meaning he was utterly and totally and completely deceived by Europe. He then went on to issue his infamous fatwa. <coughs> the British who were in India, uh, sorry, in Egypt, controlling Egypt really, the, 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 the figurehead, Egyptian government was at the figurehead, the Egypt decided, the, the British decided to establish an efficient postal system. So the Egyptian post office was established. And they decided that the Egyptian post office must be funded, funded through public funding. People would invest in a commercial enterprise called the post office. And this is something that the Egyptian people can see. It is very beneficial that you can mail parcels and mail letters and so on to the post office. But they said that when you invest your money in the post office, you're going to get a fixed return on your investment. <coughs> and Sheikh al -Azhar gave the fatwa that this is not riba. A fixed return is riba because it is not business. In order for it to qualify as business, you must embrace risk. You can make a profit or you can suffer a loss. That is business. But here is a fixed return. Come rain or come sunshine, you're getting your return on your investment. And so this is not business. This is river. Egypt to this day is still imprisoned by that fatwa. The second part of the equation is that not only has Al-Azhar University been imprisoned by this fatwa, and Al-Azhar up to today is, is insisting that bank interest is not riba. But the second part about it is up to this day Al-Azhar has not recognized the modern monetary system of paper money, non-redeemable paper money, to be bogus to be fraudulent, to be haram. And so there is no way that an Islamic government in Egypt, in this context, can escape an attack by the enemy to make the Egyptian people even poorer than they are now. When I arrived in Egypt in 1963, you were not born as yet, no. In 1963, um, one <laughs> Egyptian car, how much was it, I think? It was about 1.5 US dollars, I think, one pound. And the sterling pound was about three to, um, sorry, three Egyptian pounds to one sterling pound, would you know with that? Anyhow, so you're getting a salary, you work for the whole month, and you get a salary in Egyptian pounds, in paper, of course. And with your salary for a whole month, you can buy a camel. But then something strange happened to the Egyptian pound. After a few years, and now the same amount of work, and the same salary you're getting, you can't buy a camel anymore, you can only buy a donkey. Huh? And then a couple of years later, Zimbabwe is laughing, eh? 
Karl Barry hat auch keine Liebe. Ich bin nur nicht bei ihr gut. Und dann der Kapolier ist weiter. The same salary, same work. You can't buy a goat anymore. You can only buy a chicken. <laughs> huh? It's called inflation. Inflation. And the normal way of understanding inflation is that the prices are going up. No, you dumb, dumb. <laughs> It's not the prices going up, it's the money going down. This bogus and fraudulent monetary system has within it an inbuilt, inbuilt mechanism to rip you off every time the value of the money falls. There is a massive transfer of wealth that takes place from the unsuspecting masses to a predatory no no let me use a <coughs> terminology as one of you reminded me the blood sucking predatory elite which is both in the domestic economy and in the international economy And so the monetary system that we now have is a system which is haram based on this verse of the Quran, which is repeated three times in the Quran. Wala, 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 wala tabkhasun nas ashiyahum. Inflation. Suppose your grandfather died and he left you some money this is your part of the inheritance but you were a baby he left you a hundred dinars gold dinars but you were a baby so <coughs> your guardians had to put it away so they put it in a box and they locked it and uh, 25 years later you are grown up and you are sufficiently mature and they feel you should get your money. So they opened the box and they took it out and they gave you the 100 dinars. Masha Allah, the gold dinar had faithfully preserved what your father had left for you. <laughs> faithfully preserve the value of what your father had left for you. It has done that all through history. And they knew that. So what they did, the child, in order to rule the world, not just to rip you off, eh? it's more than that. In order to be able to eventually rule the world, was they took the 100 dinars out of the box and they put in paper. And they said, maybe this grandchild would love the U.S. dollar because it, it is written there on the U.S. dollar, in God we trust. Have you seen it? Take a look at it. In God we trust. So, mashallah, this is really the best of all money, isn't it? <laughs> so, with 100 ounces of gold, they got 3,500 US dollars at $35 an ounce. And the Bretton Woods, right? So, they took the $3,500, put it in the box, and they locked it up. 25 years later, when you were a young man and sufficiently mature, they said you should get your money. So they opened the box and they took out the 3,500 US dollars and they gave it to you. When you rubbed your eyes and you said, ah, excuse me, is this what my grandpa left for me? They said, no, 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 grandpa left for you a hundred dinars. And he then said, give me my hundred dinars, please, or that, report to the police. 
So they had to go very quickly to the market to change the US dollars back into dinars. And then they came and they gave you eight <laughs> dinars. Eight dinars. <coughs> 92% of the money was lost, gone, because of inflation. I know of one man who would not take this sitting down. This man would ask, where did my money go? Who took my money? That's why they killed him, eh? Malcolm X. <laughs> Who took my money? Where did my money go? It didn't evaporate in the clouds. And in the pursuit of those questions to seek the answers, he would have discovered that his loss was their gain. And this is what Allah speaks of in Surah Al-Nisa. وَأَخْزِهِمُ الرِّبَى وَقَدْنُهُ عَنْهُ What did he say? Allah? وَأَخْزِهِمُ الرِّبَى وَقَدْنُهُ عَنْهُ Oh! Oh! It was haram for them. Allah made it haram for them. If they listen to this lecture, they would know I'm speaking the truth. In the Torah, it was haram for them. Nabi Isa Islam made it haram for them. Riba. But when we go to the Torah, we find something else. Then the Torah now says, it is haram for an Israelite to lend on interest to another Israelite. But it is halal for him to lend on, in on interest to those who are not Israelites. The Ummiyun. Translated as Gentiles, but otherwise known as cockroaches. <laughs> So they change the word of Allah in order to be able to become money lenders to the world. وَأَخْزِهِمُ الرِّبَى وَقَدْلُهُ عَنْهُ وَأَكْلِهِمْ وَأَكْلِهِمْ أَمْوَالَ النَّاسِ بِالْبَاطِرِ And in the process, they were consuming <coughs> the wealth of mankind unjustly because my loss was your gain that's not business hmm? and so inflation all around the world today has its roots in riba a fraudulent bogus and fraudulent and haram monetary system what is coming now the new money that I call electronic and one of you called digital, you know, because you've got a new camera. Digital. <laughs> the new money which is coming to replace the paper money is coming not just to rip you off. Imagine, I have a bank account and all I need to do is once I control the system, just type in on my computer. I get a million dollars in my account. Abracadabra. <laughs> and this, this sheikh out here, he's supporting the Palestinians. So I look and I see how much money he has. He can't stop me because the money is in the bank. And all the records are there. <laughs> so I went and I typed something and his account is frozen. You know the word? Frozen. Who is he going to complain to? He lost his money. Can't get it. This is tomorrow. 